Women Innovators. Interviews with women with big messages and big missions, sharing their stories to inspire you to live your passion and step up to make the world a better place. Here's your host, Tammy Patzer. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm excited to introduce today's guest, Desi Coster. Desi is a Trivedi healer and holistic health practitioner who is committed to applying her gift of harnessing, transmitting, and infusing life force energy to uplift human health and wellness worldwide. Desi's lifelong mission has been to help people attain optimal health and wellness for themselves as an individual, for their career and business, for their family and community, and for the environment in which we live. So welcome, Desi. How are you today? I'm great, Tammy. How are you doing? Great. It is, the weather seems to be breaking and, it, you know, the birds are singing, the, <laughs> are singing, the buzzer, everything's buzzing with life. And it's like this time of the year when I think, you know, it's not the new year, but mm. people start to think about being healthy and physically fit. They come yeah. out of hibernation. Yes. And today, I thought, hey, let's talk about fitness. And mm. I'm thinking about fitness a lot and what's healthy, what's not, you know, the food I put into my body, the mm. exercise. But Fitness is something that I think fitness means different things to different people. And I know that you have a background in fitness. So why not ask Desi Coster (laughs) some information about it to lay that foundation out about fitness? And here's the big question. Mm. Is fitness really all it's cracked up to be? (laughs) That's an excellent question. So I'll dive straight in. The thing with fitness is something that there is so much hype about really when you when you look at it. And it's it's something that there's so many different things in the media and go on this program, take these supplements, do this, you know, follow this, take this, and in a week you're losing 50 pounds, or follow this program, and you'll, you know, you'll look like some super cut model within a week, you know, and, and all that stuff, that's lovely, but it doesn't happen that way. And so the, the real thing is looking at fitness. What is it? What does it mean? And, and how does it relate to us long-term? Because fitness really, it's, it's a state of being. It's a state of our health and vitality. And it's from anything from when we wake up in the morning How are you feeling? Are you, do you wake up and you feel refreshed and you're full of energy and you can take on the day? Or do you wake up in the morning and and go, Oh my goodness. You know, if I, if I could have 10 cups of coffee, maybe I could make it through. So the reason why I wanted to look at fitness and why we're looking at fitness today is to kind of see, well, what impact does it have on us? And what's it like to be physically fit? And one of the things I might start with is when we think about fitness, what are you physically capable of doing? So it might be starting with, if I said to you right now, go for a two-mile run or go for a a five-mile walk or go for a, you know, swim for a mile, are you able to do that? And for some of you, you might go, that's a piece of cake, that's easy. For others of you, you might go, (gasps) It's impossible. Uh, so we I'm need laughing because I'm going. Well, I made. I don't ever ask me to run. I never, <laughs> never have been. I mm. I could probably start walking five miles. Might be a bit, but mm. I would certainly try swimming. Worst case scenario, if I get tired, I flop on my back and do the backstroke. Mm. That's my go-to for swimming uh, if I can't swim forward. But to be honest with you, I would say, um, you know, my physical fitness level is, you know, walking around the yard. (laughs) Yeah. 
It's so, so that's the thing. Now, do we need to be doing what I suggested, being able to run here or swim there or do that? No, not necessarily. But the thing is, we need to kind of get a baseline, like you said, of, of where we are with our health. And if you're finding that even going for a short walk, you're huffing and puffing, you're struggling, or if you went to jump in a pool and swim a short distance, you just don't have the strength and stamina. Not everybody is a runner, but just say, you know, you decided you needed to run somewhere just a short distance. Are you actually capable of doing that? And if you're not, then it's time to look at, well, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to get into shape? And that's something that's really important. I, you know, I, I actually wrote a book, a, a blog about the, you know, fitness and is it all it's cracked up to be? Because I remember, you know, before I started working out with my trainer, I went and, you know, did a, did a session with him just to see what my level of fitness is. And the only way you're really going to know what your level of fitness is, is if you actually work with somebody that's qualified, that is a you know, certified personal trainer or somebody on that level who can actually take you through a series of different exercises. And then as they're watching you, they can see what's your range of motion like. They can see, are you stressing or struggling with doing certain physical activities? And how are you moving? Are there imbalances in your body as you are squatting or moving your shoulders or doing different activities? So I remember when I first did a session with the trainer, he said, okay, well, let's see where you're at. Let's get your baseline. And he got me to do these jumping things called burpees where you jump up in the air and then you kind of jump into a plank and go back and jump up. And he got me to do these side to side jumps. And within a short space of time, I thought I was going to vomit. And it was, and that's the thing. And I'm like, <gasps> and he said, okay, great. Now we know where you're at. So that was something that told me I was not at the level I wanted to be. And so by getting a baseline, we get to see, okay, where, where am I at ground zero? And then the other thing is to have an idea, well, what's your goal? What do you want to do? For some people, their goal might be they want to be able to do a short event. Some people like to do, you know what, I'm going to, I want to do this, this event. It's a charity event. And I get to walk for five miles and people will, you know, people will sponsor me and I'll make some money for the charity. So, you know, it could be that you're able to do that. It could be that you're going to do a, a 3K run or a 5K run uh, or a, here and in the US, it's like a three-mile run, a five-mile run. It might be like for a charity event as well. So you might build up for it. You might want to enter in a, into a marathon or you might want to do swimming. Whatever the thing is or the, whatever the activity is, you might say, you know what, I'd love to take up boxing as an activity because it's a great sport that you can do doesn't mean you're going to be a boxer, but it's phenomenal to keep you really fit. It's really good for aerobics. It's good for resistance. It's great for that focus, coordination. And, and so it's a, it's a fantastic sport to, to do. And it's a lot of fun. I don't know. Have you, have you ever done um, any sparring or done any boxing or done any boxing classes? The only boxing I've ever done was on a Wii. And actually, uh, that was actually pretty fun. Yeah. And I could see how boxing um, could be fun. I mean, I've had one of those bopper clowns. <laughs> <laughs> beat that thing a few times. But, but I do know that boxing does seem it, to help be, be in removing stress. Mm. You're bouncing around and you're doing things. I think for me, when I don't have any particular event that yeah. I want to do, but for me, my physical fitness, I want to be flexible, mm -hmm. and have good balance, and be mentally strong. Absolutely. Physically and mentally, so that when I walk, I don't, you know, huff and puff coming up the stairs, you yeah. know the second story of my house or walking to the mailbox or um, not being able to function, you know, mm. like going for a walk in a group. Let's say you mm. go to Disney World or you go on a trip. You want to be able to keep up yes. with someone else. You don't want to be the weakest link 
uh, in a group of people mm. just because you're out of breath. Even with massage, I have a massage therapist and she mm. works with me on teaching me how to breathe. And when I first started, I was wheezing. Oh my goodness. And now after about two months, um, I can breathe in and out Beautiful. Um, without having any weird noises. <laughs> but I had to learn how to breathe because mm. I didn't know how to breathe deeply. I, yeah. I have a tendency to be a shallow breather. So mm. just to be healthy in that sense of just being able to go all day long without becoming excessively tired. Yes. Probably what most people want. They just want to be functional. Yeah. If you do fall down or hurt yourself. You yeah. want to be strong enough so that you don't break something. Yes. And that's, I, that's, that's one of the most, yeah, that's one of the most important things about being fit. As we get older, um, it, it's easy if we, if we're not moving and used to moving around and, and, being physically active in multiple different planes because as a human being we move in in more than one direction we won't just move front and back or side to side but we also you know move around in in a circular movement so we we're multi-planar moving beings and what can happen is if we are not used to doing that first of all we can have issues with balance. We can have issues with coordination. And if we don't have strong, healthy bones, that's exactly what can happen. When we fall, we'll fracture or break as opposed to rolling and bouncing. So that's the difference. One of the, one of the things or one of the benefits of being physically fit and keeping physically active, especially with something like doing resistance training, because resistance training is, is something that's really important for everybody to be doing. And specifically for bones, we need to be doing something that has weight bearing. So something that either we physically jump up and down or do something where we have to move our actual physical body weight. So doing something like a squat and or we're actually lifting a weight and moving an additional weight around. So it could be one pound, five pounds, 30 pounds, 60 pounds, whatever, whatever the weight is. But by doing that, what we're doing is we're actually putting stress on the bone tissue itself. And by doing that, it signals the body to produce more um, of the substances that make up bone. So it increases what's known as bone mineralization, which then in turn increases the, the strength of our bone tissue itself. We have to produce more oste um, osteocytes, which are the bone cells. So the beauty of keeping fit is that it helps our bone health. So by doing, like I said, some sort of resistance training where we're either moving some additional weight around or we're doing movements with our body weight itself, that then helps support strong, healthy bones. And that's one of the big pluses of keeping fit. So with being fit, obviously you have to start. And some, yes. One of the things I noticed, and if, if I were to go back in time and talk to my younger self, <laughs> say, this is what you need to do. You mm. need to be exercising and eating right now and create good, healthy habits so that when you are older, you are physically fit. Mm. But the reality is I didn't have that conversation. <laughs> with so here I am. And I am just embarking on, let's say, a fitness strategy so that I can, you know, I figure... About if, taking care of yourself. Big time. Yeah. I figure I probably, you know, looking at my dad who just turned 92. Wow. You know, oh, well, well, I probably have at least 30 more years um, to go. Mm. Yeah. So what do you suggest... To, you need to do to embark on a fitness program. Yeah. How do you I'm, get started no okay. matter where you're at? Exactly. So the most, number one, I would always say to, to no matter who you are, you know, even if you're 20 and you're really fit and healthy, it doesn't hurt to go to your doctor and go and get a checkup. 
because that way you can just get all your vitals, get your blood done. You could even do what's called a, a physical stress test. Um, it's I, I've done them. It's, it's not the most comfortable test, but basically you're on a treadmill and you've got this special little mask thing on and they they increase the rate that the treadmill is moving at so they can see what your oxygen capacity is so they can see your breathing capacity your heart rate your cardiovascular system how it's working and then they can see your level of fitness so that can be something you might want to do if not just get a blood test and you know get get a panel of tests just to make sure you're nice and healthy and your doctor says yep you're good to go to start a fitness program then what I would do is, you know, do do a bit of a Google search around, find who are some of the best type of trainers, because really, we might think we know what we're doing. I, I've been very blessed because I've, you know, I, I've been trained as a personal trainer and I've been trained with three different companies and I've worked with some of the, you know, for myself personally, worked with some phenomenal trainers who trained me and I worked out with them. Um, you know, I got to work with uh, a former Olympiad who was a, a trainer. Um, I worked with a former, well, he's, he's still, he's a Kung Fu master. So I've worked with some pretty amazing people. But you want to work with somebody who is qualified and is an expert and is, you know, is qualified as a certified personal trainer because, number one, they know what's going on with your body. So they know what's happening with your anatomy and physiology. They're trained to look at what you, you know, what's happening in your body right now. They're trained to look at how's your body moving? Where are the imbalances? What do you need to do? Like you mentioned about stretching. For all of us, even if you're young and flexible, we can still improve our range of motion by having our maximum ability to stretch. Because if you think of it this way, we're like this machine. If everything is functioning the way it's supposed to, we use minimum amount of effort. So let's say we're doing a movement where we're, you know, it might be we've got a weight here and we're pushing it up like this and it's coming back down like that. If we've got really good range of motion in our shoulders, for example, then this is not going to, it's not going to expend any extra energy as we're doing the movement up and around. Or if we're doing some type of squat, if there is a major imbalance and let's say we're really tight and we've got some restriction, then that's going to impact the way we move. It's going to court, first of all, if you're not watching properly and if they're not watching you properly, by doing certain exercises, it can create an injury. So that's the first thing. We want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you have minimal impact and minimal chance of being injured. The next thing we want to make sure that you are expending the minimal amount of energy, excess energy that you don't need to. So let's say you're doing something like you're running. When you're running or you're even walking, you're using a number of major areas. First of all, you know, obviously when you're running or walking, you've got what's happening in the lower part of the body. So from the hips, the knees, the ankles, the feet, they all need to be coordinated then the core starts, you know, the core is integrated and activated with that. So that's all in the abdominal area, hip, glute area. Then at the same time, you, as you're running, your rib cage is actually kind of sliding a little bit around. It's meant to, so that as you're, as you're running, your, that pushing movement is, is happening. And this, the upper body coordinates with the core, which coordinates with the lower body. And so the whole thing coordinates together as one unique moving system. Anything is out of balance that's going to throw your gait out. It's going to cause problems with the running or walking. And it means you're going to expend a lot more extra energy that you don't need to. So by having somebody who knows what they're doing, they can track everything. Then they can support where you have imbalances so strengthen you so that your body works more evenly because let's say you're pulling you're running more side on the left hand side than the right hand side you're going to do more stress on the left hand side hip knee ankle joint if you have um let's say your your back is is kind of tilted in or your thoracic region is not functioning properly and you're not you're not moving as you need to, that's going to have stress on how you breathe as well. So all of these things are something that somebody that's qualified and trained for, they can look at. 
So they can give you strengthening where you need strengthening, stretch you where you need stretching. They can, um, they can also look at how the whole system is working and then build you up to doing certain exercises so that instead of jumping immediately into doing an exercise, if you are not yet fully developed for that, then they'll do preliminary work. Get your body up to a certain level of fitness and strength and then get you to do uh, other types of exercises because there is different forms of exercising. Some are more strengthening, some are more explosive to use certain muscles and certain muscle fibers, and some of them are there to help you know coordinate and and make sure the whole core works really well so that you've got that strength and that muscle recruitment to be able to you know really power on. So that's that's why work with an expert. You will be glad you did. You're going to get far better results, far quicker. You know, I, I, I'm trained as, as, as a trainer. I can tell you I'm really tough, but I cannot get the type of results for me as if somebody trained. When somebody trains me, oh, my goodness, because I just follow what they tell me and then I get great results. And that's one thing. A trainer will always push you way harder than what you will want to do. That's the other thing. It's very easy for us to go, I'm tired, I don't feel like it, I'm having a bad hair day. You know, we can all go into that. Your trainer will go, talk to the hand, and if you want to give me that, you get an extra 10 because I forget how to count. So they'll play with you, and that's a great thing about having a good trainer. They know how hard they can push you, how far they can push you, what you need to do on a regular basis, what type of foods to eat how much water to keep you hydrated so that you're getting really good results overall. The next thing what's really important is you need to pay attention to your body. That is vital. If when you're working out or you're training or you ever feel dizzy or lightheaded, stop immediately. Your body is telling you something. There's not enough oxygen perhaps getting to your brain and that might be because your breathing is labored or something else might be going on. So just stop and then take a little moment. If your breathing comes back to normal, great. If not, tell your trainer or the person you're working with immediately. If it's a one-time thing, it might be, you know, it could be just because you're tired or fatigued, but just make sure you listen. If you have a huge amount of pain or any pain when you're working out, stop. You have to pay attention to your body. Pain is telling you that there is something not either moving or functioning correctly. So it's important to listen to the pain. Does that mean if we've got like a little tiny something that we go, oh, I've got a little bit of pain and Desi said it's okay, stop? No, you have to, you have to listen to, you know, what type of pain. So you, you assess on a scale of one to 10. If it's like you can barely feel it and it's just like a little, oh, I worked out the last couple of days, I can feel a little bit of tenderness, Okay, that's fine. You can work, you know, do some stretching, work through it. But if it's a sharp, jarring pain, you know, on a scale of one to 10, it's five or over, or even four and above. You know, five, it's starting to get a bit painful. Six, seven, eight, it's, we're, we're at the severe level. 10, it's excruciating. You can't even stand it. So if you're feeling pain of any sort, again, stop, talk with your trainer. If it's something that's there persisting, immediately go and see your doctor, you know, because there might be something that's out. We want to make sure that, again, there's no uh, injury or something else that's going on that there could be some obstruction, for example. Um, It could be an obstruction somewhere in the abdominal region or something, some impingement in the joint itself. Um, There might be some twisting that has occurred in one of the joints. So, you know, don't keep going and go, yes, I'm going to go through it. And then you end up getting something like um, a rotator cuff injury or something like that. That's not smart. So that's why I said it's always important to make sure you pay attention. And if you're feeling really fatigued, one of the things I did with my clients, my clients came in and they were really fatigued. I didn't, I didn't work out with them. I said, okay, what we're doing today is we're doing stretching because if you're really fatigued or if you're extremely stressed and you physically work out, you are going to create more stress for your body and higher incidence of creating some sort of injury. So again, pay attention. If you haven't slept well, if you're absolutely exhausted, don't work out. That's not smart. Get some rest. 
and then you'll have the strength and energy to work out the next day. Same if you're highly stressed, if you've just got some really bad news or something has happened and you're really feeling stressed, that may not be the time to go and absolutely kill yourself at the gym. So in that case, do something that is a cool down. Do do some stretching. Do something that is going to relax you rather than create more stress. So that's the next most important thing. Pay attention. The next thing is it's vitally important as we're working out. When we when we do a lot of physical activity, you're you're again you're using all the different muscles, and it's really important to do stretching and what is also known as myofascial or myofascia release. Um, it's also known as foam rolling. So it's basically it's a big cylinder roll. Uh, that's made out of it. It could be like a styrofoam type material. What that does is when we, when we use that for rolling, it helps roll or break up the tissue or the fascia that tends to get, um, it, it can be, what happens is the muscle fibers, the muscle fibers should all be be- beautifully kind of lined up and, and all lined up correctly on top of each other. But what can happen is we can get like this matting that can occur with the muscle fibers when when we do a lot of activity. And when we're physically active, we can break down muscle tissue. Muscle tissue has to be reformed and rebuilt, which is a good thing. That's as we as we are working out, we we create what's called muscle recruitment. So we break down muscle tissue in order to recruit more of it to get more muscle more muscle fiber, more muscle tissue. So we become stronger and have a greater capacity for stamina, strength, and that type of thing with our movements. So it's important if you do something like stretching and incorporate the myofascial release, that that, uh, foam rolling as part of your program. And what that will do is that will help you with your range of motion. And it actually feels really great. Uh, you know, you start, you, there's a number of different programs that show you how to do it. Your trainer will take you through how to do it. And it's a great thing to do at the end of your program. Um, it's a great thing to do, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you can even do some rolling at the end of the day, or if you're feeling a little bit stressed, you can actually put a foam roller underneath your mid thoracic, the mid upper back area, stretch out on the floor and and just relax there for a moment, put a pillow under your head. And that opens up the chest. It gets you to kind of quieten down your breathing. You can put you can put um a towel or something over your eyes and just lie there for five to ten minutes. And then that will just get you to quieten down. It will help the breathing. It'll help your body relax and then get you get up off the floor and you'll feel like a million dollars. So it's really, really good. Wow, that sounds, I'm just making me tired just thinking about (laughs) breathing. I wanted to ask you about water drinking because I know it's important, but. I'm going to have some now. (laughs) I mean, recommendations. So I'd, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about the importance of water and yeah. how much should we be drinking because, um, you know, I was thinking about that you actually could drink too much water, you know. If mm, it, yes and no. It, it's, it's, it's high, yes, it's highly unlikely. Most people are massively dehydrated. That's what I find. Um, you know, a lot of people can come into the gym before they work out or before they do a workout and they're, they're already dehydrated. So, and then they work out more. And then as you're working out, of course, you're sweating. If you're in a dry environment, like for example, I'm here in Las Vegas, it's dry. You don't even notice your body is massively losing a lot of fluid because it's dry and it's wicking out of your system. If you're in a more um, humid environment, then you notice the sweating more. But in a drier environment, you there are times when you don't. And by that stage, you're massively dehydrated. So a rule of thumb is have at least half your body weight in ounces as far as fluid. So let's say you weigh, I'm just going to use a rough amount because it's just easy. If you weigh 100 pounds, then drink sorry, do you weigh 200 pounds? If you weigh 100 pounds, my goodness, you're very thin. If you weigh 200 pounds, then you're going to be drinking 100 ounces of water. So that's that's about three, three liters. If it's really hot, I say to people, drink, drink a gallon a day. 
you know, if, if it's the middle of summer, you're working out, you physically, and then you can get, you know, whatever, whatever you can do either. If you've got something like this, which is, you know, uh, a 16 or 17 ounce, uh, container, it's 500 mils. So, you know, you, you need to drink, you know, at least four of these or more a day. And so by having something like that, I, ideally, if you've got, you know, you can have a glass or you can have a stainless steel container that, you know, you know what the measurement is. So you can look and, and you can go, okay, I need to drink a certain amount of these every day. And they just have it in front of you. I always have water around me so that it's like, oh, yes, it's a reminder, drink, drink, drink. And then you just sip it throughout the day. You can make yourself tea out of water, add some lemon juice. If it's warm, then you can do things like um, have water, put sliced cucumber, lemon, mint. That's really refreshing. And then sip that throughout the day. You can even put berries in it, you know, slice up some strawberries, blueberries, things like that. And it's really nice. It's very refreshing. If it's super hot, I, I don't like ice drink so much uh, because I know it can, it can, um, what it does is if you have a lot of ice, it can, it can, uh, when it comes to digestion, it dilutes our digestion. Room temperature is better, but obviously if it's super hot, like here, it can be 115 degrees, which is, it's massively hot. So, you know, if you're going to have some ice drinks then add a little bit of ice to it, but having things like that, it's refreshing and you can, you know, you can sip it throughout the day and get plenty of water. So it's it's uh, that that to me is a rule of thumb when it comes to drinking. Well, that that sounds reasonable because mm. one day I I know I knew I wasn't drinking enough, but I think I overdid the water, and yeah, you know, pretty soon you're just like kind of feeling a little waterlogged. Uh, <laughs> it, it makes sense, you know, half your body weight. And yes. of course, if you are in a dry climate, I, I've been to Las Vegas and it, I could see it. My skin just was like, yes. all of a sudden it was just like dried up and I was like parched and, and you don't even realize it, but it yeah. happened so quick. Yeah. So um, what, what are some other things that people need to, to know about this? I mean, should we be exercising every single day or or mm. what is the the rhythm we we should expect that would be yeah. holistic and healthy yeah so i there are some people that love to work out every day go i personally think it's important to have at least at least 2 days of rest in the week because the thing is when we are our body is something that you know, it is naturally when we're sleeping, repairing, restoring, rejuvenating. So that's something it does. You know, we, th this is like this amazing thing that we live in the human body. And, and it takes care of us, which is, you know, we, we don't ever have to think about, you know, what's it doing? Am I breathing? Am I digesting? Is, if I got a cut here, was it going to fix it? Or am I going to bleed? You know, it does all that on our behalf. I personally would say to my clients, have at least two days off because then your body can have a little bit of that extra downtime to deal with any stresses. Also, if you've done a really heavy duty workout and you might be a little bit sore, so it just gives, gives your body that day of rest. So it might be you work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and have Sunday off. So it depends. You know, when I worked out, I used to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Um, sometimes I did Thursday on my own. And then I had Tuesday off, Sunday off, um, or sometimes I worked out four days a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and then had three days off. If you're doing a minimum of three times a week, that's pretty good. So I would say if you can, even if it's walking, even if you turn on some music in your house and dance around the kitchen or dance around your living room or something, you know, just have some fun. If you do that three times a week, that's all you need to do. If you've got somebody that can really show you some, some great forms of resistance training, there are, some, there are some great exercises that you can do literally that 
it's a whole body exercise. So you use upper body and you use lower body. So you're, you're really working the whole system and you only need to work out for maybe 15 minutes and that's it. So you can get, you know, what some people, it might take them an hour or more in, in, when they work out, you can do a full on workout in 15 minutes and you're done and do that three times a week and you're doing great. And then if you want to do more, you can. I personally don't recommend clients do more than five times a week because again, what I often see is they get stressed, they get tired and then sometimes they go, oh, my shoulder, or, oh, my back, or, oh, my knee. And I, I'll say to them, didn't we say five times a week, not seven? And that's the reason why. And well, one, one other thing that's really important, what you eat can have a big impact on your fitness level as well. It's really important to have balance with what you're eating. And I know people like to, you know, you've, you've got to have some time to, you know, have foods that you like to eat. Just be aware that eating lots of sugar, as in refined sugars, so particularly something like sodas, sodas leach your body of most important minerals and nutrients. And one of the things that we get to see is people that are either a little bit older or even young, young people in their teens are getting things like osteopenia, which is the precursor of osteoporosis, which is that you know, that, that issue with, uh, you know, bones and having very delicate and weak bones. So that just leaches the calcium out of your system. It's just, it's really bad. If you can avoid having sodas, you're really doing yourself a favor. Also, when we have lots of sugar, what it does is it, it weakens that how our core itself functions. So normally what happens is when we jump in or when we go to do an exercise, this core area, which is from, you know, from the glutes and then from the, the lower abdo abdominal area up to kind of the upper abdomen area, this whole region around, you know, lower tummy and up underneath the rib cage, that all kind of comes together almost like a corset holding the body together. So if you're doing squats or if you're doing some kind of a lift, like a deadlift or some type of movement, it holds you in place so that you don't have any injury. If we eat lots of sugar, it weakens how that functions together as, as, a, as a unit. And so instead of the whole thing firing together as a unit, it fires a little bit out of sequence. And then that causes that, that, that core to be weaker. And that, again, then can create imbalances and injury. So make sure you eat from all the food groups. So have good quality uh, protein because protein are the building blocks of our body. Um, and that's all your chicken, fish, meat, eggs. If you don't eat, um, you know, if you're a vegetarian, then look at your beans and, and grains to combine to make a protein-like substance. Um, even dairy is can be good good uh, for protein. You want to have carbohydrates, but again, look at good quality carbohydrates. Lean more towards your vegetables, fruit, less towards the other carbs, sugary things, um, and then you know, easy on the on the grains. If you're doing grains, then use always use whole grains. Uh, you know things like quinoa whole brown rice, things like that. That way you've got good quality uh, grains. And then fats. Fats are vitally important. It's what nourishes our brain, cerebrospinal fluid. You know, we, we need fat to be able to function properly. It, it's what also helps with our joints. So make sure you have good quality fats, you know, olive oil, butter, get, you know, like grass-fed butter, ghee, um, coconut oil is a really, really good fat. So go for those. Um, they're the really good things. And then by doing exercise, and, and like I mentioned before, the weight-bearing exercises, you're helping strengthening the bones. It's always really good. Fitness helps our cardiovascular system. So it just makes us more, it makes us stronger. And it gives us that vitality. We can last longer. So like you said, you walk up the stairs, you can run up the stairs. You don't have to think. You don't get to the top of the stairs and go, <gasps> I'm about to have a heart attack. You want to be able to climb up the stairs and, 
you know, you might be carrying the shopping. The shopping might weigh 10 pounds. The shopping might weigh 30 pounds. So you want to be able to get to the top of your stairs and not feel like you're going to pass out. So that's why it's important. It's great for the skin by being physically fit. It gives you, it helps with all, all of the different uh, min, uh, components of the skin, your elastin, your collagen. It gives you that amazing glow. Um, it, it helps you sleep. It really improves the quality of our sleep. I don't know if you, if, like when you've done a really good workout, you, you have that little bit of fatigue. That night you sleep like a rock. You wake up the next morning and you feel fantastic. So it's really great for sleep. Uh, it definitely helps with our immune system. It helps reduce inflammation. It just makes you feel good. And, you know, if you're somebody that you're in a relationship with a partner, it helps with your um, sexual health as well. It's really good for all of that. So, it's absolutely what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> well, I mean, ex- I mean, we all do, I think, instinctually know yeah. that, you know, um, our body should be physically fit. And, of course, we need to be mentally fit, physically fit, yes. spiritually fit. So how does the Trivedi effect fit into all of this? So here, here's the thing with the Trivedi effect and, and getting the energy transmissions. Again, what that does is it, it helps us at the deepest, most fundamental level. And that, again, it ripples out into our different body, mind, spirit. So it supports having a very healthy body. Ultimately, what it does, it supports, you know, again, it supports our heart health. It supports bone health. It supports skin health. It supports the the cardiovascular system. It supports our kidney and liver functioning, our brain functioning. So it really, and our endocrine system. So endocrine is what cover, you know, takes care of our hormones and everything. And that really governs how everything works as a unit. So by getting these transmissions, it really helps us function or operate at our optimal level. And then when you put you know, keeping fit on top of it, you, you become like Superman, literally, you, you become invincible. And so let's say you do slip, instead of breaking something, you, you roll, you, you don't, you don't hurt, you are able to repair, restore and rejuvenate much quicker. If there is an injury, you can overcome it much faster. Um, It helps, again, it helps our immune system, you've got a, a far stronger immune system, which means that there's less stress, less inflammation, there is less uh, wear and tear on the body overall. That's important. Again, it's fantastic for the skin, uh, you know, because th- that's the other thing. As we get older, we want to make sure that we look good. It, it, we want to have that flexibility. And then for our mind, here's the other thing. How tragic would it be that we're in really good shape, but then our mind becomes like a vegetable? We don't want that. So the other thing that this does, the energy transmission, it really helps our mind. So it helps support our cognitive functioning, helps us to be focused. It helps with our mental acuity. It helps us with discernment, keeping on point our level of performance as far as doing tasks and activities. So it's really, you know, it's phenomenal for all of that. And again, you know, by being fit, that again helps us. You know, I mentioned that if you did something like boxing or doing some type of activity, you've got to focus on, you've got to focus on coordination. And let's say you're you're sparring with somebody, as you're there, they're throwing things at you. They're, they're, they might be throwing a jab or a hook or something at you. So as you're doing that, you're, you're not only moving, but you're being aware of what's coming at you. And then your mind is taking you through, okay, this is coming here. I'm going here. This is doing this. I'm, you know, I'm defending here. I'm ducking here. I'm doing, you know, I'm ducking around a lot, but, but your, your mind is knowing what it needs to do. And same in your business. You know, if you're, if you're, you're working either in your own company or working for someone, the beauty of, of the energy transmissions is it helps you being more aware about what's happening in your day so that you're able to plan better. You're able to see what's coming at you throughout the day. Things might happen so that you're able to prepare for it 
or able to mitigate the impact of it over time. If there are challenges, you have to deal with it without getting overly stressed. Because what happens is when we get stressed, we become, we become very kind of narrow in our focus. And, we, and then that really doesn't lead us to a good outcome. By being able to be more aware and having these energy transmission, it allows us to be have our focus more expanded. And then regardless as we might feel a little bit of discomfort, we might feel um, some tension, some emotional, oh, I'm dealing with a challenge. We might feel frustrated. We might feel a little bit, you know, there might be some fear or anxiety come up, but we don't collapse into it. We just, you know, it's like, okay, I've got to deal with this. I have to talk to my accountant. I've got to get my tax done or I have to deal with this scenario. One of my employees left a mess, so I have to cover up for that. Or there might be something else. I've got. I've just taken on board a new client and they want some answers to their questions by the end of the day. So you have to be able to adjust to all of that. And this helps us with creating that emotional balance that we need and then having the, you know, the, the strength of character, the mental aptitude to be able to do what we need to do. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, well, it is. It's very interesting because I, I think that more and more people are realizing that there is a, a connection between them, you know, whoever we are, our physical, our mental, our spiritual, and, you know, mm. to, to be connected with this life force energy. So if somebody wants to talk more uh, to you about, your services and your offerings, how can they do that? Well, they can give me a call or they can email me. So if they call, uh, the number is 707-702-3394. And all of this is on my website, the desicosta.com, or they can send me an email to desi, desicosta.com. And then, you know, just, just uh, you know, write their questions and I'd be delighted to follow up with them. Great. So before I let you go, Desi, is there anything else you'd like to add? What would I like to say? The thing is, here's what I'd say. Like you said, this is the perfect time, you know, this, this for us when you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Some people might not be in this, the Northern Hemisphere, so they're, they're going into uh, autumn and winter. But for us in the Northern Hemisphere, spring is a great time really to to just go, you know what, spring clean and start, you know, getting into getting your body in great shape because summer is a lovely time to be able to enjoy, you know, all the activities. It's where a lot of people have certain breaks and kids are on school break. You can spend time with your family and it's a time to really enjoy the season and the seasons. You can get out, the weather is good. So why not really, you know, maximize the environment that you're in, get yourself nice and healthy, be fit so you can really enjoy, you know, the next few months that are coming up and for the rest of the year and get yourself in a place where you feel great in your body and you look good in your body. That to me is its greatest reward. When you feel good, you look good and and it radiates out to everybody around you. It shows. So, you know, why not give yourself a gift of getting yourself into great shape? I think that's really good advice and it's <laughs> that you mention, you know, people in the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere because mm. we live in our little closed world when yeah. all it is just because something's happening one way where we are it doesn't mean it's happening that way somewhere else. So thank yeah. you for that reminder, but that is really good advice. Why not be all you can be and yeah. be physically fit and live your best life. And so um, everyone definitely talk to Desi. She's got a really broad and diverse background when it comes to all of this. And that knowledge I think is really useful because you can talk to someone about the whole, mm. the whole of them, you know, their personal and their business lives and you know the physical the mental the spiritual so you're able to connect at that holistic level of dealing with a whole person and a whole life 
So I, I think that's really important. So everyone, that's Desi Coster.com. And thank you so much, Desi. I really appreciate you taking time to talk with me today. Well, thank you, Tammy. It's, as always, an absolute pleasure. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. You've been listening to Women Innovators with Tammy Patzer. To learn more, please go to womeninnovatorsradio.com. And please do subscribe and share to spread the big messages and big missions to change the world.